Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Lara Tips. In today's video, we will be casting the entire response. We'll not just cast the small part of our applications like MySQL queries, but we'll cast the entire response, this whole HTML that is being rendered here. In this way, we can make our application much more faster. So if I show you here, guys, I am here currently in this dashboard page. So this is coming from this dashboard controller and we are just returning this. Now, whenever a user visit this page, so this is a very simple page here, guys, but some of you might have a very complex page. There might be a lot of data in there. So whenever user visits here, then it will just get the users and it will just return the view and here it has to parse all this X app layout here table table all the components that we have in this page but we don't want all this process to take place on every request we just want it to happen once and from every other request we'll just take it from the cache and if you see here in the browser currently guys so here are look here guys it is parsing the 16 views. There's so many views here, yeah? It is parsing 16 views. There are two queries and there are three models that are being loaded. Also, if you see this metric guys here, it took 36.5 milliseconds, but it is a very small number because we have very less data here. Let's say we have many more data, then it would be much more higher and we can drastically reduce the number of seconds that our app will take to load. So what is the perfect place where we can add caching? So guys, it's the middleware. And if you don't know about middleware, then I have already created a video about that. I'll be leaving the link just below that like button and you can watch that. After watching that, then you can again come here. And whenever we cache our response in the middleware, then whenever a user visits this dashboard page, then the second time whenever he or she visits the page, then then the request will not even reach this controller. It will directly return the cast response from the middleware. So that will also reduce some of the time that our website takes to load. So now let's create a middleware. PHP artisan make middleware cast response middleware. And it will create this cast response middleware inside app HTTP middleware. Here we can see here guys. And whenever we create a middleware, we have to register it inside the kernel. So let's do that app HTTP kernel and we'll just duplicate this one and we'll just add it to the bottom of our page here and we'll just paste it here so here it is we are just following this convention okay guys because here in every middlewares we have this full path of the class so we are also adding that and instead of this auth we'll write here cas response like this now we can use this key in our this web.psv file here in the middleware like this but we'll not use it now we'll just use it eventually okay okay now let's see how to implement the caching here so you can see here guys here we can only see the request we don't have any response we don't want to cache the request we want to cache the response now guys if you see here in the laravel documentation here middleware so here is a terminable middleware section i'll be leaving this link also below the like button you can see that so sometimes a middleware may need to do some work after http response has been sent to the browser so whenever some response has been sent to the browser after that this action will be performed so how can we implement this so let's see here so there is this handle method that is already present in our middleware here also there is terminate method and this method will run when there is a successful response so let us just paste it over here like this okay and now let's say here we want to cast the entire response and we can get the contents of the entire response like this so let's say contents equals to dollar response get content like this and we want to cache it and if you don't know about caching then also you can watch my video tutorial i have already made that so here we can see here cache and i have imported it over here so we'll say here cache put and we'll give the key name and here we'll give the value that we want to cache let's say contents and for how many seconds we want to cache let's say for now five seconds okay and we have to determine this key also and this how many seconds we want to cache also we want it to be passed from this middleware from here from the routes okay if nothing is passed we'll just add some default value and here okay guys this is only being used once and let us just add it over here and remove this and also let us calculate the key over here and before calculate the key we want this 
key to be unique for every page and now if i show you here in the dashboard controller guys so if i just do here dd and here if i say here request full url like this if i come here in the browser and if i just refresh here you can see here guys i am getting the full url and let's say if there is any query parameters foo bar then it will also get reflected over here so we can use this request full url as a cache key so now let me go to this middleware and let me just create a private method and let's say cache key and here the key will be request and we have to pass the request also here let's say this one okay request full url like this and suppose let's say guys whenever a user visits this page without logging in and we cast that response okay and again the user logs in then same page will be shown because we have already cast it so we have to get the unique identifier of the user as well authenticated user identifier so here the first of all the we'll get the full url and let us append the authenticated user id auth id we'll do it like this because guys whenever a user is not authenticated it will return null and whenever somebody is authenticated or user is authenticated then it will return the id of the user here the request to full url will will get some colon and slash slash that kind of characters yeah some cache driver may not support it so we'll just convert this into md5 and it will convert this whole into md5 string and which will not contain any special characters so instead of this key we can see here this cache key like this and here we'll pass the request let me comment this for now guys and let me show you the request cycle so here so i'm logging this data okay so first of all it will be a request and whenever the response has been sent then we'll just visit this response like this this thing will log the data to this laravel.log file and let's see by using this middleware over here in the web.php now let me add here cache response and let's see what happens when you visit this dashboard okay so now here if i visit this page then you can see here guys in the laravel log this first this request is visited and then this response is visited so you can see here guys first this is visited and second this is visited okay so here guys we'll first cache whenever we get the response and suppose let's say we already have the data in the cache we don't need to cache it one more time so we'll just return from here okay if cache has this key then there is already a data in the cache then we don't want to cache it again okay then here we'll just do an early return so now here guys if the response is already cached then we don't will not cache it again otherwise we'll cache it now here guys in the handle let's say if the cache is already present then we'll return from the cache here okay we have cached it here but we'll return from here if the cache is already present so this next means just forward the request okay now here we'll say here again if the content is present in the cache then we will get the content from the cache and we'll return it and now let's see what we get here in the cache so in this way we can get the content of the cache okay guys now here we have already added the middleware and whenever we visit this da dashboard page will go through this middleware and here in the first response it will just cache it for five seconds okay and here in the second whenever i refresh for the second time then it will will see whatever there is in the cache okay now if i refresh this for the first time it is cached now again if i refresh now you can see here guys i am getting the whole html there is no php here everything is html now let me comment this for now and refresh now how can we show this rendered page from here we can simply do it like this so we'll just here return and instead of dd we'll say response it will just return this html response from here and now guys if i show you here one more time okay if i refresh the page and here is view 16 queries 2 and model 3 and if i refresh one more time and you can see here guys the views is zero so there are no views it doesn't need to parse any views and queries is one because laravel always do one query select all from users whenever a user is logged in so we'll always get this query no matter what and in the model also there is only one user model being hydrated because laravel has done this select all from users and when we do this guys 
if you see here whenever we return it from here it will not even reach the controller this dashboard controller if i show you guys here dd1 so first of all let me comment this one and refresh the page one more time and now it will cache and comment it and if i just do refresh here guys you can see here guys i'm not seeing even seeing that dd1 over here yeah because it is not even reaching the controller okay guys we have now successfully done the caching now let's see how we can pass this five this time to leave okay ttl from this one because we we might want some pages to be cached for a certain period of time and for some pages we want it to be cached for some other period of time then we can do it from here now we can accept a parameter here like this let's say here ttl now to access this ttl inside here we can just create a property private property here and we can assign it over here like this now we can access this property here like this and this parameter is whatever we pass it from here okay now we can pass it like this let's cache it for 10 seconds so the first parameter will be 10 and suppose let's say we have here dollar b then we can pass here another parameter let's say apple like this or anything that we want there and also some cache driver supports tagging then you can pass the tags as the second parameter so we'll not do that here we just pass here one parameter and let me just remove it okay we'll get the ttl over here since we are passing it from here okay guys so there is one one problem here i'll just show you let me comment this cache part and this one as well okay now let me just log it here okay there are this ttl like this and i'll do same thing over here so we have already seen there first this handle will be executed and whenever there is a response then this terminate will be executed now if i go here in the laravel.log let me remove this now let's see what happens because whenever first time this is visited we'll set this ttl and then we are accessing it from the response now let's see whether this thing will be available here or not now if i go here in the browser and refresh the page and if i come here now here look here see guys so we'll not be able to get that value because laravel will create a new instance whenever a response is completed and then it will call this terminate and it is also mentioned here in the laravel documentation if i show you here guys so here when calling the terminate method on your middleware laravel will resolve a fresh instant of the middleware from the service container in our case we don't want this behavior to happen we want the same instance to be called after the response has been resolved so for that we just have to do this so we, we just have to register our middleware as a singleton so let, let me go to app service provider and here i'll add this in the boot method and the name of our middleware is cache response middleware and it is imported over here guys so now if i do this now let me just clear the log if i come here and again refresh the page and if i come here look here guys now we can see both 10 over here now we can get this ttl over here okay so let me remove this and enable the cache and here also let me enable it and remove that info okay guys now we have passed from here 10 okay now let me make it 5 so guys if i come here and refresh the page so before refreshing you have to see these values guys here 16 2 and 3 and these values will be reduced whenever we get the data from the cache so now i'll refresh this two or three times and you'll see because it is only for five seconds so let's see that so now i'm refreshing here so you can see here guys in the second refresh zero third refresh it's zero if i refresh it three or four times now you can see here guys it's 16 over here so for the five seconds it has cached the content and and again fresh data is being fetched. so let's say guys if we want this for 10 seconds then also we can do that so if i refresh here so now it is cached for 10 seconds if you guys count so i am refreshing here so five seconds have passed again it the views is zero over here guys now there is 16 because just now 10 seconds has passed okay guys so let's say if this ttl is not passed then we'll set a default value 
so here let's make it nullable and if there is a ttl then we'll use that otherwise we'll say here carbon now add day so we'll pass it for a day we can either pass an integer or a carbon instance in this ttl here in this in this parameter so i am using just carbon so it will be just easier so if nothing is passed then it will just cast for entire day and let me show you guys here and here if i refresh the page now it is cast if i refresh it one more time you can see here guys the views are zero and queries and models are only one and one and whenever i refresh again and again for entire day then also this value it will get the data from the cache so that's it for this video guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed this video then please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and also hit subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this because nowadays i am publishing two videos every week monday and friday so if you want to get notified just press that bell icon and that's it for today guys thank you for watching have a great day bye